Before we even get into today's video, I want to make a bet. I, I, I have nothing to offer you, but I'm going to make a bet anyway. I bet they just stick with this name. The, the name Town is going to stick with this game. Just like Project Octopath Traveler just turned into Octopath Traveler. Project Town or Town Working Title, I prefer Project Town. That's what we're going to talk, call it now on. But Project Town is just going to turn into Town. Like, the name makes sense. It, it's all set in one town. Why not just call the game Town? The name stands out. It's very recognisable. People already know the game as Town. Just stick with it. And I think they will. Alright, today's video isn't a discussion of whether we think it's town or not, it's actually the details of everything we know about town. And we have to start from the start for those of you who don't know anything about town. So town, first of all, is an RPG. As I mentioned, it's just all set in one town. And it's been made by Game Freak. Now you guys probably recognise the name Game Freak if you've been around town a few times. Game Freak are the ones who do all the Pokemon games. But that's not all. They do dive outside of Pokemon games well, every now and then. The most recent one that I played was po Pocket Card Jockey, which is a really cool, uh, I think it was a 3DS game. I should know considering I played it. But they've done a few other games here, like they've done Hammer Knight, uh, Drill Dozer, and Tembo the Badass Elephant, which I actually played a little bit of that as well. I didn't get very far, like maybe 15 minutes into the game, but it seemed really cool and had that real flair to it. I don't know what that actually even means, but it had something. <laughs> so as I mentioned, the game is entirely set in one village. Cool premise. And apparently this village is under the protection of a castle. Uh, as you can kind of see, I'll put it up on screen to make sure you can see what's going on, follow along with me here. But this is a castle that you see here in the background of the first screen. Looks super Lord of the Rings inspired if you ask me. Now, being under the protection of this castle, you'd think they'd be doing pretty okay. But apparently some monsters showed up and now they're not doing so great. The settlement enjoyed lasting peace. That is, until the sudden appearance of monsters. Now I do want to come back to this, but we're just going to dive through a, a bit of an overview here before we start going any deeper. So next of all, we've seen a little bit of the combat. Kind of looks like a card game-ish, the way you have like attack and defense stats, and so does the enemy. Uh, the stats, obviously every RPG has stats, but like the way each kind of attack has its own attack and defense to it. And I think the hook of this game, what they're kind of using to reel players in and saying, this is our unique thing, seems to be summoning townsfolk. So obviously it's all set in one town, they all wanted to be about these townspeople, and you seem to be able to summon townsfolk into your battles to do different abilities. We've only seen one yet, and I guess we'll go into that in a little bit. Now that's kind of the basic overview. We don't know anything else. We don't know if you're going to be building your town yet. We don't even know anything outside of the combat and kind of the setup here. So now it's about time that we start diving a little bit deeper into some of these details. And I think we should start with the story. Right at the start of the trailer, they kind of set up what the story is apparently about. Well, kind of. They say, a new story in a village with a secret to hide. Now obviously we've got no idea what this secret is yet. They haven't even kind of given an overview of that. But we do have an idea of how the game actually starts, thanks to a few of the little cutscenes we've seen here. So first of all, we get to see inside the castle, which there almost looks to be some sort of bad dude here talking to the king. Um, he's got to be bad. Look at I me. Mean, look at those eyebrows. The, the, the fist is clenched. There is a bad dude there if I've ever seen one. And then you notice the king. He looks a little bit harmless and a little bit clueless, um, as all kings seem to do in these kind of cute RPGs. And so I'm guessing something goes down between these two. And we kind of might get a bit more of an idea thanks to the next dialogue box that we got here. Now the character Nezu says, who, remember that name? So the name Nezu, that's going to come up again later. So the character Nezu says, A soldier from the castle is supposed to be coming down today. But of course, the village gets attacked and that doesn't happen as we see the monster later on the trailer. So what actually happens? And the guess here is that the soldier never turned up. Obviously what went down between the king and, and this bad dude, um, there's something went down there and the king decided not to send the soldier down. And that's why we're now in trouble. At least that's my interpretation of it. We don't really have much else to go on here. We do see another dialogue box here with a character called Shipu, who is... Shipu is possibly the worst name I've ever seen in an RPG, but we'll move straight on from that one. The Shipu asks us to take care of Teru. Now, obviously this doesn't give us anything, but it does give us a question, is this a main quest, which is most likely, or is this a side quest? Because obviously being an RPG, there's got to be side quests that you've got to complete around this town. Um, so I'm wondering if this is the first one of them that we've seen, and who's Teru? Is it just another character, or is it the sheep that you see behind? <laughs> now obviously we're not going to spend too long speculating about sheep, and I do want to get into the combat. Make sure you're sticking around for anything, stick around for that combat, because that's where it gets really interesting. But I do want to quickly talk about the design for a second here, because if you pay careful attention to the town, you'll notice that there's snake designs all over it, like everything. There's on the walls, it's on the roofs, it's on the walls and roofs, and <laughs> almost every kind of design, like the towers, they seem to have some sort of snake design to them. But that's not all. The snake isn't the only animal we see. We see this greenhouse here, which 
By greenhouse, I mean the house is green, it's not an actual greenhouse. Uh, and this seems to have so like, ram designs all over. As you can see, like there's a ram design at the front with a couple of chains coming down, as well as all the windows and everything. So um, obviously snakes aren't gonna be the only animals. But they do seem to be actually be a majority in saying that. If we jump back to the, the scene with the health bar here, which we're about to get into the combat, you'll notice that the health bar actually looks like it resembles a snake as well. So uh, something about snakes in this game, they had a really snake theme going on. Hopefully that doesn't scare anyone away. Take up arms against invading monsters and strategically select from a variety of battle commands. Now we're gonna dive through this combat and this is where it gets a little bit more intricate. So I'm gonna try step processes one through one and we'll see how we go, see if we can keep up. Um, that's really offensive to say to people, try keep up, but <laughs> there's a lot here to kind of go over. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully I can do a good job of explaining it. Now I'm gonna do a quick overview first of all. So at the bottom, you're actually gonna see a status bar for yourself. So obviously this is where your health and, and all of that is. At the top, you're gonna to see an enemy status bar and all their actions. In the middle is all the actions that you can actually take in battle. And on the bottom left, you'll see that there's dwellers and terrain, which again, we're gonna get into all of these in a second. And on the bottom right, you'll see info. All right, let's make our way backwards through these and we'll go through a little bit slower and dive into them. So the first one, the least interesting one is probably the info. Uh, we don't really know what that could be. I'm a little bit confused with why it shows like a rotating Joy-Con. Now this is where it gets really interesting because now we see dwellers and terrain. Obviously dwellers are the people that, that you meet in the town and you call upon them, but what's, it, what, what's the terrain? Like what's that got to do with it? They haven't talked about anything as far as like summoning different terrain situations that could happen. I'm not sure what that actually means. So I'm wondering if maybe that's just a translation something there that hasn't come through, or maybe there's more than just the dwellers that you can actually call on in combat. Now, as far as the dwellers themselves, if you pay careful attention here, you notice what I mentioned before about the name? His name is not the like zoo anymore. There's some sort of mistake here, and they've called him Nez. I, I'm just assuming that they know the correct pronunciation for the word Nez, and that's how they put it on screen. So apart from Nezu's sudden name change, this summoning scene where they're obviously summon, summoning him into the battle, um, you notice that he has, th at the start here, two ideas. First of all, it says, get two ideas, which I'm assuming this is a translation thing again. If, you, if you've ever played a Jap or seen the speedrun of like a Japanese Mario Sunshine, it says, shine, get, which it, like obviously that's just some sort of translation thing where there's not like yet, yeah, um, I don't know even what they say in the normal one. Maybe I've been watching too many speedruns, but. <laughs> so when the game actually comes out, I'm guessing this is gonna say has two ideas. Anyway, moving on from there, you notice that I think they skip past the two ideas because they jump straight to him to summoning the meat or having an idea for meat and then that turning into a, an idea or a light bulb. So my guess here is that the other idea would probably be some sort of attack option and the, the meat option is probably some sort of healing option, something like that anyway. All right, now we get to move on to our status bar. So this is down the bottom there and you can see our HP. You can see that we have SP, although we don't seem to have any at the moment. There are three red crystals on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you'll notice there's an icon and I think we're gonna have to go a little bit further into this to get some more context. So maybe we can understand what that is. When we jump into the middle of the screen, you'll see the actions that I was talking about earlier. Now we know that the yellow action is elude and the, the red one down the bottom left there is heavy punch. I think what's unique about this, which we're about to get into, is that the, the, the names and the descriptions, because each one has a description as well, they actually mean nothing. They don't seem to mean anything. It's, the, it's the, the attack and defense options of them that actually seem to matter. Like the elude, it, it isn't a dodge. It seems to have its own attack and defense stats. So it's not gonna evade an attack like you think it would. And I guess in that way is where it kind of gets a little bit more similar to a card game. Since I'm talking about them, I should actually mention that the, the, the icons, the, the attack one is the blue one that you see. The green one is the defense and the red one seems to be the crystals that you use. So you remember the crystals that we saw down the bottom? This is how many crystals it will cost to use that attack. Now if we move up to the enemy, you notice that they have the same type of deal here. They have a health bar, they have SP, but they don't seem to have any SP either. And then they have what's called down the bottom, a voltage bar with a level that just says one next to it. Now this is where it gets like really interesting. So make sure you pay careful attention here because it gets different to what you actually think this would be. At least that's the way I'm interpreting this. So let's dive into it. Now you notice there's five purple icons that look like they'll go from number one to number six. And the first two have attacks on them. They seem to work similar to our attacks in that they have like a certain defense and a certain attack rating. And at the moment we can kind of see that the first attack there is highlighted. In other words, the purple around it is a bit more brighter and, and more shown. So my first assumption when we saw this was that each one of these one to six was gonna be a turn order. So in each one of these turns, they were gonna use one of these attacks and it was gonna move along that bar. I mean, that would make sense and that's kind of 
what you'd expect. But diving a little bit deeper here, I think we, we might see something different. Now my assumption, which will make more sense as we get further into this, is that that voltage bar, where it says voltage one, is actually where these, what these levels are. So one to six is the one to six level of voltage. And you'll notice at the start of each turn, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, that that voltage bar actually grows a little bit. It's not when you attack it, when the monster, at the start of each one of the monsters turn, that voltage bar will grow. Now why do I assume this? Well, you notice that when we actually attack each other, we choose an attack option that has two attack and the monster chooses an attack that has one. Also respectively, our defense value is three compared to the monster's defense value, which is one. All right, so now that we know that our attack is gonna do two damage, you would assume the monster would lose two health or perhaps one health because they're, the attack option they're using has one defense. But after our attack, after we both collide with each other, you'll notice that neither of us actually lose health, which makes sense for us because we had three defense there. But why didn't the monster lose health? I think the situation here is that we're actually attacking the monster's attack specifically. You notice that when it's highlighted here, it says minus one on the defense bar of the monster and then break over it, meaning we're about to break that attack. We're not actually attacking the health, we're attacking the attack. And same with the monster attacking us, we have a minus one over our defense saying that it's only gonna take one away from our three defense and our attack option is not going to break. So why is this important? Well, it seems that you're gonna be able to break the enemy attacks as a strategy to almost say, I don't want you using that attack, I'm gonna break it, and then I'm gonna focus on your health, rather than, like, it gives you options in battle, and that seems to be what they're going for here. Also, you'll notice that with the second attack, at the moment, since he's not voltage level two, it's not quite lit up around the outside like it possibly could be. So I'm guessing that we can't, maybe we still can target that one, but the monster can't use it to voltage level two. We also seem to be able to press the R trigger to see a little bit more details about the monster's attacks, perhaps. Now, there's a few things that I'm less sure on that I still want to go over. Now, you might have noticed that one of the attacks was yellow for us, and then two were red. One, one of the red ones was actually grayed out, which again, we'll get into. But the red ones, I'm assuming, are character-specific ones. In other words, they're bound to the character which we are, or maybe the ones that we can unlock. This yellow one, on the other hand, I've got to believe it's got to do with whatever weapon you're wearing. We're wearing. <laughs> you notice that it's actually the shape of a shield and you're wearing a shield. So I'm guessing you can, I mean, I really don't know if you can even change your weapon because we've only seen the character with this weapon. But I'm guessing it, maybe if you change your weapon, that'll change the different abilities that you can use as far as the colored ones. Also the third ability you notice is grayed out. That's obviously because there's four crystals you need and we only have three down the bottom. Now how we actually get more, uh, I don't know how they regenerate first of all, but I have a feeling that th just as we progress through the story, we're gonna unlock more crystals here. As you notice at the very end, the last thing we see in the actual um, cutscene, the actual trailer, whatever you wanna call it, is the character picking up a red crystal off the ground or holding a red crystal. So I'm assuming that's part of the story. The only other thing that I didn't mention here is you remember the SP I mentioned at the start? We got no idea what that is. We don't even see the character with any at any point. So obviously there's no point talking about that. And then down next to the character icon again, right next to the health, we still don't know what that is, but it does look like an attack, but it has zero crystal use and, and only does one damage. So that must be if you've, I guess, lost all your attacks and still need something to do, at least you still have an option there. I mean, that makes sense as you can break the enemy attacks, they can break yours as well, as we said with the shield options that have the minus ones on them. I hope you guys really enjoyed this really super deep dive into towns. There's more that I could go over here. Um, like this, I think we've got a little bit of an idea of the layout of this town already, but I really don't want to get too deep in the weeds here. I don't think I'll find you again. So I just got to leave it at this for now. And I think we're going to get more info on this when we get another direct. Obviously it's coming out in 2019. I really should have mentioned that at the start if I didn't, but it's coming out in 2019. And um, we haven't got any more info yet. So there's got to be something coming up soon. Don't forget to let me know how you're feeling about town. And I think I'm gonna stick with doing some stuff like this for a while. Obviously I'm gonna dive into the news every now and then like I've been doing, but I much prefer kind of these deep dives into different games that we've seen off in the future. And they seem to be working out great for me. So we'll see how this goes for a little bit longer now. And I don't know why, I'm just giving you an update of how the channel is going for now, which we made reach 500, woo! <laughs> All right guys, thank you for tuning in. And remember, for great Nintendo entertainment, you can count on me. So these end videos, sometimes sponsored by Patreons, and today's is sponsored by Nat. And Nat, I asked her what she wanted me to talk about, and she said, I don't know, talk about Vegemite. So I guess I'm talking about Vegemite today. It's a super Australian thing, if you don't know what this is. It comes in a small jar, comes in a big jar. Um, the stuff smells just horrendous, but it tastes great on toast. I really actually like Vegemite. So 
That's my opinion on Vegemite. I have uncles actually who put this in their tea and they mix it around and drink it like, not in their tea, but they just hot water and Vegemite and they just drink it. It's, I, I can't go that far. I like it on toast and that's about it. Anyway, Vegemite. It puts a rose on every cheek. That's, that's how the song goes. I'm not crazy. Bye.